Welcome back to The Ed Show. In the debate tonight in Iowa, the Republican candidates went after President Obama on foreign policy. Again and again, they said he is weak. Are President Obama's actions inviting war? Absolutely. The right course under President uh, uh, Obama's plans is to shrink our military, thinking somehow if we appease or accommodate the, the tyrants of the world, that the world will be safer. He's wrong. Do you think if we had 11 missiles fired in the United States, we don't well with this president, he might well say, gee, maybe we could communicate and you would like us more. This administration uh, has absolutely bungled. Uh, it is the most muddled foreign policy that I can ever remember in my lifetime. I'm rejoined tonight by MSNBC political analysts Richard Wolf, E.J. Dion of the Washington Post, and Democratic strategist Crystal Ball. Also joining us tonight, John Soltz, chairman of VoteVets.org and Iraq War veteran. John, let's start with you. There are a lot of saber rattling going on tonight out there. I, when I listened to Rick Santorum, I thought we were going to get hit by the Iranians in about 10 minutes. Uh, are, the depiction that President Obama is weak, fair, unfair? It's completely false. You're talking about a president president who ended the Iraq war this week, finally, a war that it, you know, essentially supercharged al-Qaeda recruiting, a war that strengthened Iran because as we invaded Iraq and set up a democracy, now there's a tremendous amount of Iranian influence there. So what President Obama is, he has done things the Republicans never could do. He killed Osama bin Laden. He has a very effective counter-terror campaign across the world globally that's killing terrorists everywhere, and he's ended a war that's supercharged recruiting. I mean, they are the reason that we're less safe, and the president is the reason that the world's number one bad guy is dead. Richard, uh, the president was actually uh, criticized tonight for not bombing Iran right. over a drone. A drone. Right. We're, we're in a situation here where the Republican field, the most sane person is Ron Paul, who says it's really not worth invading Iran <laughs> to get a drone back. That's how ridiculous it is. Uh, and Rick Perry cannot remember a more muddled foreign policy. That's a pretty low bar in terms of his memory. Uh, Axelrod tweeted, wonder if bin Laden and uh, demolished al-Qaeda leadership agree with Mitt that President Obama is timid on national security. Shouldn't this be the answer every time they say President Obama is weak? E.J. Dion, is this proper? What do you think? I think you're going to hear uh, the name of Osama bin Laden come up a lot uh, in this campaign. I think there's a great irony is that if you look at the polls, um, uh, Barack Obama's strongest numbers are on his foreign policy. Americans wanted the war in Iraq to end several years ago. Uh, they are not, they're in favor of a withdrawal from Afghanistan that he has started. They want it to go faster. And I think the Republicans really do sound like um, they are from about five, six, seven years ago. And the rhetoric they're using now may still appeal uh, in a Republican primary, but it's just not where the country is uh, at all right now. Crystal, why is Ron Paul surging in the polls in Iowa? He got quite a bit of response tonight when he talked about, you know, not having uh, international intervention and not being so anxious to get into all these wars. This is in the middle of the country, and Ron Paul is being cheered tremendously by Iowans tonight. What did you make of that? Is that why he's surging? Well, I actually think the reason he's surging is because he's someone that whether you agree with him or not, he does not pander. And that's something I respect about him. He tells you exactly what he thinks he's sort of fundamentally incapable of pandering. He's had a phenomenal on the ground operation, and I think he's been really smart in his campaign. He's also been a little more focused this time around than he was in 2008 on his economic policies, which are very popular among the conservative base. That being said, I think there is a lid on his support because his extreme isolationist views are out of line with the uh, Republican base, as appealing as I find some of them to be. Uh, let's go back to Newt Gingrich for a moment. I, I thought he really asked for the order tonight, saying that he's a staunch conservative and giving a 30-year record of it, but he compared himself to Ronald Reagan running in 1979. Here it is. I've been around long enough that I remember at this exact time in 1979, when Ronald Reagan was running 30 points behind Bill Clinton, behind Jimmy Carter. And if people had said, gosh, electability is the number one issue, they wouldn't have nominated him. 
Richard Wolf, how does that play? What do you think? You know, the, the problem is he can remember 30 years ago as if it was yesterday, although he did obviously confuse being someone who's been in Washington for 30 years, Bill Clinton and, and, and uh, Jimmy Carter. You know, um, yes, he can say, I've always been a conservative. He's not trying to fool people that he's a moderate trying to be conservative. That's the implicit contrast with Mitt Romney. But he's been there 30 years. This is his fourth decade in Washington. Is he from another era? That's the problem that American voters are going to face. Are they moving forward? Are they going back? EJ, has, you know, is, is that one skeleton that uh, Newt Gingrich has gotten rid of, that he has maybe convinced Iowa voters that he is a conservative? You know, I just think it's very hard to convince anyone that Newt Gingrich is not a conservative. And uh, Richard's right that 1980 was a long time ago, but a lot of, first of all, the Republican primary and caucus electorate is very old compared to the rest of the country. And secondly, every conservative remembers that uh, Democrats were saying Ronald Reagan was the easiest guy to beat. They love to bring that up uh, with Democrats. And so I think that line resonated with the audience that he was talking to, not necessarily with other audiences, but with the audience he needed to care about. John Soltz, Richard Wolf, E.J. Dion, Crystal Ball, great to have all of you with us tonight. I appreciate your time and your take. Coming up, my exclusive interview with House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi, her thoughts on the Democrats' chances in 2012, and if she thinks her former House colleague Newt Gingrich has a shot at the presidency. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss it.